If you've ever watched pro disc golfers, you've certainly seen them throw really straight far shots through tree line gaps, and you've most certainly seen them throw big bomb S type shots in open fields to get maximum distance. And I'm sure like most of us, you've asked yourself, how the heck do they do that? Well, the way they do it is actually with the Heiser Flip, an essential shot to learn as you gain more experience and one that you're gonna be going back to, especially for those tree line shots. So what is a Heiser Flip? Well, a Heiser Flip is when the disc is released on a Heiser angle with a bit of force. Then during the beginning of its flight, the disc starts to flatten out or flip up to flat, bringing the nose down a bit, allowing for the disc to fly straight for long distances. And at the end of the flight, the disc will waver off just a little bit to the left or right, or even just end straight. Now there are two situations on when you would want to use a hyzer flip. Now the first instance would be if you're trying to throw the disc straight. So any kind of tunnel shots or tree line courses, the hyzer flip is definitely going to be your best friend. Because if you actually try and throw a disc straight or flat, it's very difficult to do, it's very finicky, and the disc ends up wavering off to the left or right. But when you hyzer flip it, all you have to concentrate on is that hyzer angle and all that energy of the release goes into flipping the disc up to flat so that it can then fly straight. Now the second instance to use a hyzer flip is when maximum distance is much more important than accuracy. When you wanna do a big bomb shot and you have a lot of room to work with. And if you didn't know, since 1998, the hyzer flip has been the go-to shot for long distance records. So what the professionals do is they aim to the left of the fairway, if throwing right hand backhand, they hyzer flip it with a ton of force and they put it high into the air, but they choose a disc that they know is still gonna to wanna to flip up and turn over. And once that disc turns over, the disc goes into an incredible glided flight, which then gives them that maximum distance. So now that you know when to throw a hyzer flip, let's talk about how to throw a hyzer flip. Well, there really is only two requirements, but it does take a bit of practice. Now, the first requirement is that you want to be releasing the disc on a hyzer angle. And what a lot of people don't know is that the hyzer angle is produced with your upper portion of your body. So you want the upper portion of your body leaning more towards the ground, dipped a little bit to create that hyzer angle. And you also have to be careful of the nose angle. The more upwards the nose angle upon release, the harder the disc is to hyzer flip, which is why a hyzer flip straight shot is a lot easier than the hyzer flip maximum distance type shot. Because for that shot, you need a lot of power, you need an understable disc, and you really need to be able to get that disc to turn over even when launching it high into the air. Now the second requirement is that you need to use a more understable disc to allow the disc the ability to flip up. Now, this may take a bit of time, a bit of trial and error with some of your discs. However, here are a few tips to keep in mind to help make this process just a little bit quicker. Firstly, putters, mid ranges, and worn out discs are more ideal for hyzer flipping because they turn over with a lot more ease when more power is applied. Whereas distance drivers require a lot more power, they don't want to turn over to the right as much, and considering it's more of a finesse shot, it can be very difficult to do. Secondly, you're gonna wanna use a disc with more turn than fade, unless it's a very beat up or worn out disc or just a disc at a slower speed. Now, this is gonna depend on the player. It's gonna depend on their skill level, how they release the disc, as well as how much power that they have. But typically, ideally, you want a disc that has a turn between minus one and minus five. I would say the sweet spot is about minus one to minus three. And fade, you really don't wanna go over anything above a two. But again, it just depends on the experience of the player. And the last thing to keep in mind is that lighter discs are easier to get further distance and easier to get that turnover. So if you're having trouble, you've used a putter in a mid-range, you have a disc with a lot of negative turn and you're still having trouble, maybe you need to try a lighter disc or maybe you're just throwing it a little bit too nose up and the disc is having trouble turning over you gotta remember that this is a bit of a delicate, finicky type shot. So if you're finding that you're doing the hyzer flip and it's turning out to the right very quickly and not really going anywhere, just diving into the ground, you need something more overstable. So increasing the disc weight, increasing the amount of hyzer you're putting on the disc, choosing a different disc altogether with, for instance, more fade than turn, those are ways that you can adjust to get that hyzer flip flight. And the same can be said if the disc just comes out left, you need 
something more understable. So a lighter disc, more of a putter or a mid-range, maybe more of a beaten up disc. So there's a bit of trial and error to figure out what disc you can hyzer flip well and which ones you can't. Well, that pretty much sums up the Heiser Flip and everything you need to know about this shot type. It's the shot that allows you to throw straight through tunnel gaps while getting a lot of distance and also the shot shape that allows you to get maximum distance when you have a little room to work with. We truly hope you've learned something today and you're ready to take that Heiser Flip out onto the course. Thanks as always for watching Just This, for being a part of this community. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so for more quality justice content just like this one. We'll see you in the next one. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.